Hello, and welcome to my tutorial series on how to mod Fallen Enchantress. Uh, so I just uh, sort of realized by looking at the forums that some people might not know how to install a mod, uh, which is incredibly foreign to me, but I'll try and treat this like a cooking show where they teach people uh, how to cook basic items. Um, so the first thing you're going to want to do is uh, go on to the old internet. Um, let's see, so I'd go on the internet, I'd go to the Fallen Enchantress Money Nexus, which is up and very posh. Look at all this uh, cool stuff. It's just like the New Vegas modding site, which is just so cool in my opinion. All right, so you'd go here, you'd look for the biblical sort of picture here of um, this poor chap and his um, son who is being slaughtered. And then here's the angel saying, oh, actually, we were just sort of kidding. We just wanted to see if you'd do it. <laughs> uh, don't you love God? Um, anyhow, uh, back to the file. Sorry, I get sidetracked once in a while. Uh, Master's Affliction. So you would uh, click on this, and it would download Mas Master's Affliction onto your computer. Um, you can get rid of that. So theoretically, it just downloaded the latest version of my mod here, uh, and it's going to be in .rar .rar format. Hmm. You know, I think I just realized that the modding Nexus only allows .zips. Um, but anyhow, we're going to open this up with WinRAR, which is a great program that everyone should get. Um, click Extract To. Um, it's going to just extract it to wherever you had this. Uh, click OK, but I'll click Cancel because I already have it here. So then this folder would then be on your desktop or in your My Downloads folder, wherever you decided to uh, unpack it. And you've got this folder, and it's got a whole bunch of stuff in it. Um, so what I would do is probably just set it up like this. Um, and then you'll go into... Oops. Hmm. How do you open a new folder? Very odd. Sorry, at the same time that I'm tutorializing uh, Fallen Enchantress, I also don't know how to use Windows 8. So this is going to be a little bit less fun for everybody involved. Ah, yes. Okay, so I clicked um, Program Files, in theory, uh, went to Stardock Games, Fallen Enchantress. Um, so then you'll be in sort of the main folder here. None of this matters to us. We click uh, Data, then we go to English, um, and this has all of the actual game files. Uh, so what you'll want to do is take all of the Master's Affliction files, start up here, hold down Shift, uh, click the bottom, and all of these folders uh, you want to move into here um, and replace all of the sort of core game files. Um, so this is what we call a core mod because it mods the core rules of the game. Um, and then there's a second kind of mod, this is the, the normal intended kind of mod, where you're just adding new things to the game that don't overwrite old things. But in my opinion, the overall game isn't quite up to perfection, or at least not my idea of perfection. Um, so I mod the core game, and not all of this is actually core game mod, some of it's content, um, but you can put it all here. Whereas if I wanted to use the user folder um, to do the normal kind, you could only put some of it there. It's very frustrating. Uh, so yeah, you've got all this stuff, you hold right click to drag it over, uh, it'll give you the option. You want to click uh, copy here, um, it'll bring up this uh, sort of box, or if you have Windows 7 or whatever, it'll be a slightly more user-friendly box. Um, you'll click uh, Replace Files in the Destination, um, and that'll be that. It'll, it's also going to merge any uh, folders I have here, so I won't actually do it, because I think I need to update this folder, actually, for my next uh, minor update. don't want to overwrite my changes. Um, anyhow, so it'll be uh, like the core improvements is going to replace or is going to uh, merge with this core improvements, and then it'll replace all the files that it needs to. Um, in general, everything is just a file here, that's also a file there, and I've modified some stuff in it. Um, the There's a couple of folders here, the core improvements is in a special folder for some reason, and the tech tree is in a special folder for some reason. And then there's the effects uh, folder that actually makes sense because, yeah, there's a lot of effects fo uh, in here. And they're all fairly large size, so you gotta keep those separate. Makes sense. 
Did I just do something weird? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so, uh, that's essentially how you'd inst install my mod. Um, you just copy these files into that folder. Uh, what is important to note, and hopefully you haven't been doing this step by step during the video, is you want to go, uh, let's see, so this is the English folder we're in. Go back to data, take the English folder, uh, hold right click, you know, copy it to your desktop. You need to make a backup of this English folder because that's the only folder that I change. Uh, but you do want the original copy uh, for when you update, which I'll explain in a second. Sorry, I probably should have done this first, but yeah, you know, this is um, just basically all the data, and it's going to be uh, copied so that you have a backup. And then I actually rename that backup. Uh, but I'll delete it in this case because I don't need it. Wow, lots of uh, sort of wasted space there. Um, anyhow, so then you've um, got your backup, and then you're free to do what I just told you how to do. Uh, when you need to patch the game, um, Microsoft, or sorry, not Microsoft, Starduck has actually this pretty uh, nice thing that basically if you're updating and you've modded a, fo a folder, um, they understand that sometimes you mod the core folders because you need to. Um, and so their patch actually won't, will not patch any files that you've modified. Uh, it'll just skip them over and do the changes to any file that you have not modified. Uh, so theoretically, um, if you wanted to roll the dice, and this is actually what I do, um, I patch and I don't remove any folders and then all the ones that I've changed don't get updated because I want them the way they are. And all the ones that I haven't changed uh, patch normally. Um, so that's pretty handy. It's one of my favorite things about uh, making a new version of the game is I have a lot less work to do thanks to that. Um, so you should be aware though that you do need to put the English folder back in here um, and then just pretty much delete your um, Master's Affliction files because uh, they're not important. Um, I'm going to come up with a new version of them and then you'll do the sa repeat the same process for Master's Affliction 1.03. Um, oh, that's another thing that you should note, is the way I have my mod set up, or the numbers anyways, it's version 1.02, and then the next period, 016, that means it's the 16th version of uh, the game that I've modded, and it's the point zero or 1.02 of the main game. Uh, so that you can always tell exactly which version you have when you're looking at it, um, and what it'll be compatible with. Let's see, what else do you need to know about this? Ah, oh, yes. So that is the, um, that's the FE, or the Fallen Enchantress game uh, directory that I just showed you. Um, in your my, oops, sorry. <laughs> Windows 8, right, am I right? <laughs> uh, so let's see, we'll go to uh, downloads, go back one to Lord V000. should change my username. That's a terrible username. I don't even think I chose that. Hmm. Um, yes, my documents, my games. It's a very empty computer right now. Uh, Fallen Enchantress, this is your user file. And I keep uh, the game file, which is what I just showed you, and the user file on my desktop and a Windows fence because it makes it more convenient to get to. Um, so here we have the FE user file. It's got a place for mods. If you're just adding content to the game, like, oh, I have a cool idea for a new sword that gives you uh, plus one initiative um, per level. Uh, so you can make that sword and put it into the game. Um, let's see, yeah, under items. Yeah, basically, you can put it anywhere in this folder, and the game will find it when you start the game. And it'll say, hey, there's a new weapon. It'll put that new weapon in the game. You don't really need to worry about it. Um, there's no copying, no pasting. You just make it, put it here, and the game will read it. Um, that's for anything that you add. Anything you replace, you have to do in the core file. Um, so as you can see, I don't use the user file because at the same time, if you just want to add a weapon or item, you can put it uh, in the uh, game file as well, and it'll also read it. So this is basically if everything in the game, in, the, in modding and the game, work perfectly, we would just put all of our uh, stuff in the user directory and everything would function. But since there's a few mod bugs, you can't do that. And so you, um, people like me are forced to do 
what we call core mods. Uh, and this would just be, I think, considered a normal mod or a content mod. I'm not sure what we call them um, because I don't make them. So any tiles that you make, you can put in here. Uh, these are all the units that you've saved in game. Um, now for me, I, I can click uh, retire on a unit and it'll s still save it in here. It won't delete it. Uh, but according to certain people on the forums in their version of the game, it'll actually delete it from this folder, which I've never experienced. Um, but one nice thing to do is to, any time that you make a, a mod or install a mod, uh, you've gonna, you're going to have a, a big list of units here, and none of them are going to work with the, uh, the new mod that you've loaded, because it's probably going to change a lot of the stuff that these um, units are trying to use. So you should probably take a look through here and delete anything that you think won't be compatible with the mod that you've made. Um, on the flip side, you can say, oh, well, let's see, I made the um, Athican Crusader. You can pull up his um, stuff, you can see all of his equipment here, and just sort of, uh, like, say, oh, well, Short Sword of Altar. Uh, well, I modded in a new Short Sword for, uh, or I, I modded in a new Dagger for Altar, so you just change Short Sword to Dagger, and then you've already got a pre-designed unit for the AI to use. Um, and for you, once you, um, if you decide to play Altar. So, yeah. Also, it's uh, another thing to note that the AI is ten times more powerful if you have a large units folder because it needs units and the vanilla units kind of suck. So you need to make tons and tons of units like this um, to make the AI competent. Each time you um, start a new game and finish a game, you're basically building on the AI from the last game, which will make the game get progressively more difficult. Which I think is kind of a really brilliant design strategy on the dev's part. Um, what else? I don't think there's much else. Uh, your maps are going to be stored here. Here's my mod pre-road. If you downloaded uh, a content mod, you'd just take whatever files in the content mod. Uh, let's say you downloaded my map, and then you'd put them in the maps folder, or you'd put them down here at the bottom of this in the uh, user folder or you can even put them in the mods folder. Um, doesn't matter, the game will read it. Um, Alright, so that's um, the basics of how to install a mod, and I think I will start a new video um, concerning some other modding minutiae. Thanks for watching.